Oh, okay, it looks like I am back online, at least I hope so. Am I back online? No. Back, okay, so I'm hearing from some people in the chat that I am back. And I see myself, okay, great, it does look like I am back. So. Okay, thank you for sticking with me. I do apologize for uh, that little delay in the video. Um, so basically, I was saying before we got cut off that I think it's really important for advancing the cause of liberty that people participate in mutual aid organizations and mutual aid activities. It's really easy. You can be done from anywhere. Uh, you can do it with money if you don't have time. You can do it with time if you don't have money. Uh, you can start your own mutual aid organizations, or you can join one of the myriad of mutual aid organizations that already exist. And it's so easy and it's just so rewarding. I can't even describe the great feeling that um, you get when you volunteer and when you know that you've helped someone else, else out on a voluntary basis. And the security of knowing that that help will be there for you if you need it at some point in your life as well. So. You know, it's emotionally fulfilling, it's, it's uh, easy, it doesn't take that much time, it doesn't take much effort. There are a lot of mutual aid organizations out there that already exist. It doesn't necessarily require organizational skills. And I completely just think it's a win-win strategy for advancing liberty in our lifetime is just getting out there, doing some volunteer work, and being vocal about it, and uh, not being shy about starting those conversations about how we can provide these services on a voluntary basis and we do not need to use force, we do not need anyone uh, claiming a monopoly on uh, the provision of social services. We can do this as communities, as large organizations, and as individuals and neighborhoods. Um, so that's basically where I'm at. Uh, I think that if people were to spend some time thinking about what framework would be ideal to have in place to have a voluntary society, mutual aid would be it. And that's why I'm speaking about this today. I just want to get these ideas out there. Please, if you are wanting to get involved, if you are wanting to do something that promotes liberty, but you're not sure what to do, or you, you know, uh, you might already be doing it, but, <laughs> you know, get involved with some mutual aid organizations, volunteer, help people, and tell people about it. Be vocal. Uh, be uh, be someone who's knowledgeable about these concepts and spread the word. And basically that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Um, I'm not the only one saying it either. There have been a lot of people recently coming out writing articles about this. Uh, Sharon Presley comes to mind. Sean Lee comes to mind. A lot of people in the Liberty community talking about mutual aid and how it's important to have these things that people can get involved in, not just to talk about them, but to actually do. And I think that we are way closer to that than uh, most of us even know, and that these structures are already a lot in place. And uh, basically that mutual aid is paramount to achieving freedom. So, and the last thing I want to say is, if you enjoyed this talk, uh, I would say don't give a donation to me, but I would consider uh, a donation to Free Aid, and that is fr33aid.com. That is the volunteer first aid organization that I'm a part of, which with some other wonderful people, um, some lovely ladies, Garland and Teresa, that are uh, the main co-organizers with me of Free Aid. I really appreciate them and all that they do. And I've had so much fun volunteering with Free Aid. It's been a blast. It's been so rewarding and so fulfilling. I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, anyone can volunteer in some capacity. Everybody has different skills, you know, maybe you're interested in finance, you know, so get involved with a financial co-op or make loans or give micro loans, you know, around the world. There are lots of organizations like that, forgot to mention them before. Um, you know, there are, lots of, uh, there are lots of ways to get involved that don't necessarily involve uh, uh, medicine or mental health or uh, anything like that. You know, there are just, you can get creative and find ways to help others no matter what you would like to do. Um, so. Okay, I guess I am going to, so yes, if you like the talk, maybe throw a few bucks towards free aid, fr33aid.com, and I'm going to look at the questions right now in the chat and see if there are any questions 
um, that I can take before the next talk comes up. Um, I don't see any right now, but feel free to type them. And if I don't see any in the next couple of minutes, I am going to uh, sign off and let the next person come in. I believe the next people up on the schedule are, hmm, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. There, there's a talk about Bitcoins later on, and then there is um, the Liberty on Tour guys talking about cop blocking and strategy and stuff like that. So, cool. Oh, um, okay. Here's the question. What do you think of the idea of mutualist groups as informal insurance companies? Um, I think that's an interesting idea. And insurance company kind of has this connotation. A lot of times when you talk about liberty and you say, oh, <laughs> we do have a message that Nick, Nick Ford is up next giving a talk. So we'll be sticking around for that. And uh, thank you very much, Nick. But to, to answer this question, mutual aid uh, groups as informal insurance companies, um, you know, I insurance company has the connotation of being structured a certain way, right? Where there's kind of a hierarchical structure you know, there are people who are kind of making decisions top down and uh, members buy in and uh, kind of, you know, get a subscription which guarantees them certain services and there are very involved contracts and so forth. And that's fine. I'm sure there are lots of people who would want to patronize uh, an organization like that. And, you know, actually, um, there are some insurance companies like auto insurance companies today that do give other benefits besides auto insurance, like some of them use the insurance premium to invest and then they pay dividends at, at the end of the year. Um, and there are some uh, insurance organizations like, uh, like AAA comes to mind. They give benefits, they give discounts at other uh, stores and things like that. And so I, I have no problem with that kind of model. Um, there are also mutual aid organizations that are kind of decentralized and that are a little bit less um, top down, kind of more co-op style, I guess you could say. Um, maybe more something that, that would be done on a smaller scale, like a uh, neighborhood organization or uh, immigrant group or something like that, or maybe a li local chapter of a Lions Club, that kind of thing. Um, so that's mostly what I have to say about that. Next question is, um, what do you think are the most important or effective mutual aid efforts to move towards an Agora society? Oh yeah, and I meant to touch on the word. Thank you for bringing that up, um, Edwin, who is the one who asked that question. Um, Agorism is essentially revolutionary um, market anarchism, which is basically, um, I think of it as encompassing the idea a lot of, uh, of kind of making the state obsolete, uh, that kind of thing, providing services that uh, people traditionally associate with being provided by the state, but they're being provided by people, uh, private individuals. And that really ties in with mutual aid. Gosh, I mean, th that's the whole point of mutual aid is kind of to provide uh, social services and other things that are usually provided by the government in this day and age on a private voluntary basis. So what do I think are the most important and effective mutual aid efforts? Well, healthcare is a huge one. And I happen to be uh, not just an activist, but uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in my bio at the beginning, but I happen to be not just an activist, but also a medical student. And so I am actually studying to become a doctor and I plan uh, on making a huge part of my work as a physician um, you know, providing services at free or very reduced cost for people who are in need of help. And I, I'm starting to do that now on a volunteer basis with uh, first aid, with free aid. And a lot of other people who are EMTs and paramedics and, uh, and doctors are also joining in on that front. And, you know, there are, there are lots of relief organizations that are for doctors, Doctors Without Borders and uh, the hurricane relief efforts and that kind of thing. So medicine is a huge one because especially as people age, uh, and are living longer with new technology, which is great. Um, they're going to experience more health problems towards the end of their life. And I think we've all seen that Medicare and Medicaid don't cut it. You know, they don't provide those services to the poor and the elderly. They, uh, the VA uh, is another example of government health care that really isn't delivering what it promises and is not keeping people's information secure and is providing substandard care and conditions in their hospitals in a lot of cases. And so, you know, I think it's really important that voluntary um, medical help uh, is available. Another one I think that's really important is um, kind of the financial co-ops 
um, that kind of thing, because uh, it's really often, um, you know, welfare is, is a huge thing. Government welfare is a huge thing. There are a, a lot of abuses in that system, and I think the government is, is so large and so bureaucratic that it really cannot adequately distinguish between people who sincerely need help and people who uh, have lived, you know, generations on welfare and, and don't know anything else or are just trying to uh, take advantage of the system, which some people are in the in the government welfare system, and and so, but there are people in there who legitimately need help, you know, and I think a lot of these private uh, organizations would be a lot better at helping them in the long term, you know, maybe helping them with skills um, instead of just paying them um, to have children or paying them to do nothing, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I don't mean to sound uncompassionate when I say those things. I, they're it's just that the welfare system, the way it's set up, uh, gives people incentives to have children and often, you know, pays more than, than certain types of work and is uh, is quite easy to get sometimes. And in some cases, it's hard. It, it's hard for the people who actually need it to get. And so the whole system is just backwards. So I would just say that uh, health care services and um, financial assistance and also kind of banking services, that kind of thing, are some of the most needed. And of course, under healthcare goes dentistry because that's uh, you know kind of one and the same. It's like routine maintenance on your body, right? And uh, I can't tell you how many people have asked me if I know of any agorist dentists and uh, and doctors that are cash only doctors and maybe accept uh, cash payments and that kind of thing. And they're difficult to find, but uh, you know you can just to address that question real quick. You can ask um, dental students and dental hygiene hygiene students uh, sometimes are allowed to. Um, kind of practice uh, their their skills on people, that kind of thing. And of course, preventative care is huge. You know, teeth brushing, regular cleanings are worth paying for. Uh, they're way cheaper than root canals, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and the same goes for medicine, you know, getting adequate sleep and nutrition um, and having reducing one's stress levels as much as possible um, through relaxation and uh, introspection and that kind of thing goes such a long way to uh, preventing future medical costs and going to the doctor because of sickness and that kind of thing. Um, and then somebody in the chat, Joe, Joe actually, hi Joe, he, he says um, Mexico has inexpensive dentists and that's true. They do have um, doctors and dentists who uh, don't encounter some of the regulations and stuff here that we have in the U.S. Um, I would advise people to always be careful about uh, snake oil salesmen though, you know, because you can encounter those anywhere, you know, anywhere you go. Um, just be skeptical and kind of uh, look for customer reviews and some other recommendations of uh, people. You know, medical tourism is a huge industry and people are traveling all over the world to get procedures done that uh, were just so expensive in the U.S. because of all the regulations and because of all the government involvement in the medical field. And so I think that uh, in a way that's sort of a form of agorism as well. You know, medical tourism just kind of voting with your feet, going somewhere else uh, to get services that are not to your satisfaction uh, in the U.S. as they're available. Okay, and so one more question in the chat. Um, Adam says, what do you think about the Occupy Wall Street movement? Have you reached out to help them organize? It sounds like they're getting hit pretty hard. And yeah, the I know a little bit about the Occupy Wall Street movement, um, just a little bit, and it's in New York City. Um, personally, I don't have much of a desire to go there, but I know that there have been a lot of other mutual aid organizations that uh, have stepped up to help out the Occupy Wall Street um, protesters, including um, Anonymous actually put out a medic primer, uh, a handbook, somebody showed this to me the other day, uh, where they talk about basically first aid skills that anyone can do. And, you know, I know that they need medics that are kind of trying to deal with the police brutality. There's a lot of brutality on the part of the police, nothing on the part of the protesters as far as I've heard. They're all very peaceful and uh, they're, they're really getting attacked kind of in a Gandhi-esque style. You know, they're getting beat and pepper sprayed and tased and all kinds of stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that's really unfortunate. And there are examples of mutual aid actually happening there, you know. Um, so... I think that's uh, very interesting, and if you want to help them out, I mean, I'm sure that they would be grateful for that. I don't know exactly how to do that, except um, maybe to go there yourself and try to uh, triage or, you know, help if somebody is uh, clearly injured, you know. Um, it seems like they could use all the help that they can get. 
So, and someone's putting a link in the chat to uh, blog posts and some articles about uh, the NYPD um, and the violence that they're, you know, the protesters are experiencing on the part of the police. And this this happens so often. You know, it happens at uh, the uh, national conventions, you know, of the political parties. It happens at the G20 protests and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, from what I understand, from what I can read of the blogs that cover it and everything, you know, it's pretty much the police who are the violent ones. It's not the protesters. So, um, and usually when there is a violent protester, so-called, it's like an agent provocateur. You know, they're trying to kind of plant someone to start something that's violent and uh, have an excuse to crack down on them. So, yep. Um, heart goes out to them. And uh, one more thing about kind of uh, protesting and mutual aid. There was the Orlando Cop Watch group and the Food Not Bombs in Orlando that had teamed up a while back to do some activism where they were breaking a city ordinance that prohibited feeding the homeless. And wow, I just thought that was the uh, a, a stunning, shining example of awesome civil disobedience that essentially no one could disagree with, you know. Who's against feeding the homeless? <laughs> and if you are, then, you know, what's the problem? <laughs> they're not hurting anyone. They're not doing it. They're not destroying any property. They're just giving people food who are down and out and hungry. And um, there were people getting arrested daily for that, you know, and some police crackdowns and some harsh uh, jail sentences for those kind of things going on. And so I think that activism is an example of both civil disobedience and mutual aid. And uh, I thought it was a really interesting one. And I think that, you know, uh, I don't want to say anything. It's far be it for me to criticize anyone's activism, but I would love, love to see more civil disobedience of that nature in New Hampshire, of the nature where uh, people are helping people, people are helping others, uh, they're, they're doing things for the community, they're volunteering, and there is some that goes on, but uh, I, I think we could all uh, agree that we would like to see more. And uh, part of that is uh, what I'm trying to do, help do with free aid and with this talk. So um, if there are any more questions, oh, somebody says in the chat, uh, I saw an article where people around the country were ordering food from local restaurants for the protesters on Wall Street. And yeah, that's an example of mutual aid as well. And, you know, it, it could be as simple as that. You know, if you participate in something like that, you are doing mutual aid. It's so easy, and it's so rewarding, and it's so uh, anybody can do it. Anybody, anybody can do it anywhere, you know, with anybody. Um, and it's a great way to kind of get the ideas of liberty out and to, uh, to help form the framework for a voluntary society. So, okay, um, if there are no more questions in the chat, I will stick around for a couple more minutes, but... Uh, we are rounding out the end of the hour, so I would like to thank you all so much for tuning in to my talk today. I really do appreciate it. Um, if, you want, if you would like to hear more about me, um, or if you'd like to hear more of me talking, you can go <laughs> to uh, tune in to Free Talk Live at freetalklive.com, which is a radio show uh, seven nights a week, but I'm on every Sunday night and sometimes other nights. And I also have my own radio show called Pork Therapy at porctherapy.com. And you can hear all the archives there um, and tune in every Friday night live on the Liberty Radio Network over at LRN.FM. And catch me with free aid, volunteering. I will be at Libertopia in San Diego this October in, in about three weeks. Wow, it's coming up fast. Or maybe four weeks, more like it. Um, I will be at Libertopia volunteering uh, with free aid, providing volunteer first aid services with my co-volunteers over at that organization. And... Your donations are extremely helpful in that regard, helping us buy supplies and um, house our volunteers while we're at uh, Libertopia. We are a volunteer organization that relies exclusively on donations. And wow, at the previous events that we were at, people were so generous. And it was so heartening to see that, uh, that generosity and that uh, you know people were uh, we're stepping up to say that they thought we were providing volunteer uh, services in a way that was valuable to them. So thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, free aid, fr33aid.com if you want to find out more about me. And thank you so much for tuning in today. Yay, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of Agora IO. Yay. <laughs> thanks to everyone who said good job in the chat. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to sign off now. 
Enjoy. Nick Ford is up next. And uh, have a great evening.